is actually a real, it's, it's, it's a real privilege to be stood here. I'm really, ex I'm really excited to be able to tell you about this because uh, it's interesting um, that Luis and Anne Law have been talking about that, that step of faith and moving on from different things. Uh, this time last year, I was quite happily uh, a deputy head of a school. I kid you not, I sat down at the end of the summer term this past year. Uh, I'd been doing the job for three years. I sat at my desk. I said, I said to myself, you know, I'm getting my, I'm getting my head around this. <laughs> a few minutes later, an email from John Aitken, who some of you will have known as the direct, as one of the previous directors of Echoes drops into my inbox, says, we've got this role coming up. We think you might be, uh, you, you might possibly be interested in looking at it. Would you preferably consider applying? Now I'm here. <laughs> um, and, and so it's, it is exciting to be able to do these things because actually I can look back and go, actually, and, and go the Lord has taken me from one thing into another. And it, it'll be a privilege to, to talk to you actually later on in the in, in the weekend about you know the way in which the lord can use us um but uh yeah so echoes international um who are we now you could you, you might well have known a lot about echoes from from when you were growing up um my first uh, my first memory of echoes is actually my mum and dad inviting echoes mission partners around for sunday lunch they'd come and come back on deputation speak at our church and then they'd come back um but actually, what that shows is the, the model of Echoes. It's all about that partnership, and it's about a, a church-driven model. So what's really important it, for us to grasp as Christians is that God has given to local bodies of his church the mandate and the ability to do mission and the ability to partner with, with missionaries. Um, and, and actually... Uh, that's, what, that's what we're keen to do at Echoes. One of the things we do is we support mission partners around the globe. And we do a huge amount with people that are already there. Um, we do a lot with member care and that kind of thing. Basically, making sure that missionaries are, are looked after, making sure that we check in with them. I had the privilege of checking in with Louise and Anne Law this morning at Tilsley College and talking about their ministry that's one of the things Echoes does. Echoes takes care of uh, mission partners who are on the field. We don't direct them, by the way. That's a really important thing that's, worth, that's actually good for you to know. There are many mission organizations around the world who do things differently. They'll recruit missionaries and they will send them and tell them where to be. Echoes doesn't do that. Because, and the reason for that is it comes back to the church. The church does that. The local, the local church, the, the leaders, the elders of the church have a key role and the congregation have a key role in sending someone. And so what we are here to do is encourage the church to do that. Because we come from, quite often most of us come from a tradition where churches are independent. Um, and actually there's not necessarily that launch pad to get someone to where they're going, but there is the desire. And so Echoes come along and we, we are primarily about prayer. You know, ultimately, this is not our work. This is the work of, of God, the work, the work of the sovereign God who changes lives, who changes things. And so we need him to do that work. And so for us, we, we publish a variety of, uh, of things. Over the years, Echoes used to just be a magazine. Um, does anybody here get the Daily Prayer, daily prayer Guide? Anybody? Um, you, might, you might consider it after this. This is not the Daily Prayer Guide. This is a monthly update. But it gives you um, a way to pray through the month for mission partners. And it's worth, it's worth thinking about your prayer life at this stage and going, is mission part of my prayer life? Not just about me going, but about particular, particular missionaries that I'm praying for on the field. Because prayer does change things. God does answer prayer. Um, there are also other ways you can you can pick up on the prayer. Um, we have a, a mailing list every week, and mission partners will send in uh, everything from uh, we're starting up this new Alpha course or a Christianity Explored course or this new work amongst such and such a group to actually my family's been really unwell. Please pray for them, and everything in between. And actually, 
the nice thing is they can do that and they know that there are, there are a group of people who are going to be praying. So if you want to get involved in that, uh, again, that can be sent straight to your phone. Um, talk to one of us. Who, um, it doesn't really matter, but if, they, if, you've, if someone's written echoes on their badge, talk to one of us and we can get you signed up for that. But prayer is really important. Um, but there's also that supporting... Uh, oh, I've gone too far. There is, there is supporting mission from the local church. It is that partnership in the gospel. But we are there to help those who feel a specific call to go on cross-cultural mission. And that's what we mean by mobilisation. Getting people from the point of sensing a call and working with their local church to say, is this the, is this the right thing for me to actually being where the Lord has called them? And, and that's a, a really, you know, it's, it's a, an important task. It's a hard task sometimes. Um, and it looks different for every, every mission partner. Some, some come to us and say, I know, where, I know where the Lord has called me. I've got these skills and I could do this, this and this. And some come and say, we know the Lord has called us. And the conversation, and there's a, one, one partner in mind at the moment, has gone on for five years. And they've just now gone we, we, we've tried we, we've tried a placement in this place. We're going to stay. Um, so that process looks different, but it's also about equipping and training, um, and making sure that people, uh, you know, are as prepared as they can be, um, and that can be from a, like a very grassroots level. So we'll talk about that in a moment. But we're also really keen to be a mission organisation that is not. Um, is not necessarily stuck in tradition. Um, picks up on the best bits of mission over the years, but actually we're about mission for the 21st century. And that's going to look different more and more. Uh, so I just want to play you a little video of some of our priorities um, at Echoes. And this, this was done at the end of last year, I think. You might not have picked up on all of that, but actually the gist of it is that mission looks very, very different uh, now to what it did 100 years ago. Um, 100 years ago, you might have said, I, I feel a burden to, to reach people um, in the Muslim world, so you would have gone to the Middle East. Now, you might go to another part of Britain, um, because migration and the, the movement of people groups has changed the face of the planet that we, that we live on. And so Echoes is keen to move with that time. Um, the other aspect is that we, we, have, uh, we have a burden for the unreached parts of the world. Um, any, if you've heard the Echoes pitch before, does anyone remember the percentage roughly of the world that doesn't... No, you're not allowed to enter. You work for Echoes. <laughs> um, the, roughly the percentage of the world that has little or no knowledge of the gospel. And I say little or no. So it's about 42%. So we think of a globalised world where, with the internet and everybody moving to and fro. Surely everybody's had access to Jesus by now. No. It's a, it, it's a big task still. You know, that, that, that task is ongoing in mm. our time. Um, so what I would encourage you to do, some of you are here, and I won't ask you to put your hand up, but you're here because you think maybe actually you want to go, you know, you want to go into cross-cultural mission. Maybe that's something you are considering. But some of you might be here going, actually, this, this seems really a really good thing to find out more about. 
And actually, before I go on to, to those of you who want to go, I want to encourage you from this verse I spoke about when, in, in the interview. Paul writes to the church in Philippi, and he's so thankful to them. And he talks about this partnership in the gospel. And what, what we see is this model of Paul. You know, if, there's, if there was ever a missionary who could have gone it alone, it was probably the Apostle Paul. But he didn't. He, had, he was backed by local churches. And so this weekend, if you're, if, if you're in that position where you, you're interested in this, my challenge to you is resolve to think about how you can partner, how you can, where you are in your local fellowship. Can you, can you pray? Can you um, raise awareness of the needs of missionaries in your congregation? Can you share the idea of mission with a teenage group or a children's group that you happen to lead? You guys are probably in a position where you might be serving in that way, thinking about that. But actually, if you are thinking that you might be in some way called to cross-cultural mission, or it's something that, you, that, that, it, that is on your heart, there are a few ways in which Echoes can help in that beginning of that, that process. The first one is First Serve, and Karen's going to talk to you about that. We've heard a little bit about it already. Uh, and that is, uh, that, that's, that's kind of, that gets you involved. It hopefully whets your appetite. It provides a little bit of training. It provides placement, um, both in the UK and, um, and overseas. Um, we've got a few people midway through placement at the moment. Um, but uh, anybody else here done first serve? We've got Sophia and Rachel, but anybody else in the, in the room done first serve as well? No? Okay, in that case, guys, you're going to have to do the whole thing. Um, <laughs> no. Uh, but, but do speak to, to Karen if you're thinking that that might be something that's useful, but I won't steal her thunder. Um, we, but what we also do is we're quite involved in sending people to Tilsley College. Um, if you are thinking that uh, mission might be for you, cross-cultural mission might be for you, we're keen to train and equip. Um, and actually one of the things that I do in my role is to kind of identify how, whether actually some training, some theological training at Tilsley and some, some training in, in, in mission would be helpful. Um, so, you know, do talk to me about that. And, and actually, you know, there are plenty of folks from, from Tilsley here as well. So do, you know, do chat about that. Um, we're, we're very thankful for that partnership with Glow and Tilsley there. But also we, we have um, sort of midway between first serve and long term, you know, mission for many, many years, decades, we, have a, we, we actually have a, perhaps a lesser known approach where we'll, we'll take people on short term. And what we mean by that is between two months and two years. So, it, um, and actually it might be that you're in a position where you, you kind of, you've, you've been to university, you've got some skills, you go, I could actually use this. I could serve the Lord with, with, with these skills or whatever it might be, or I could serve in a church elsewhere. And I'd like, to, I'd like to go out for perhaps an extended period of time, but I'm not in a position where actually uh, I could commit, I, I feel called to commit forever, but I want to kind of see, see where this goes. Um, some people go out, they serve in that way, they come back, then they continue on, serve in their local church and, and carry on. Some go, actually, I want to do this for, for longer. I want to stay out there. I want to perhaps actually ask my church if I can be commended for long term. But those are just a few of the things that are steps along the way that I just wanted to share with you that you could consider. But I think that's, that's pretty much it. So thank you for listening for a moment. And if you do have any questions, do come and talk to me or one of the other Echoes guys and, uh, and, and ask them if you have any other questions as well. I haven't gone through everything that Echoes does, but have a little look in the booklet that's in your pack. It's really useful. But uh, thank you, folks. Mm -hmm.